I was just talking to Neil Fallon. He said it's such a huge topic. An hour goes by in just a few minutes, it seems, because you just scratched the surface. Uh, but we're almost out of time. We'll definitely have him back up. And I was just talking to him. We're going to work on getting System of a Down on in the next few months here. We're really expanding the show, mixing it up a bit, not just Alex Jones up here preaching. I want to try to jam in a few calls, but uh, it seems like a lot of people are waking up. Neil, are you seeing that with other musicians you talk to? Yeah, it, in, in the rock world, this is this is a topic that's, I think, always been on the radar. Um, you know, maybe starting out with punk rock, and uh, maybe it's the mind of... Uh, you know, kind of the the artist is always looking for a deeper reality, whether it be through painting or writing or music. And because of that, they maybe are inclined to look, is there a deeper reality in politics? And the um, rock musicians, I get, virtually every one of them discusses this thing in one form or another. And there's a, there's many different opinions as there are musicians. But um, it, it's out there, and you, you hear it in music, you just got to have to go, Go looking for it. You're not going to hear it in top 40 music. It's not going to be something that you uh, see in the Billboard charts. But there is a lot of it out there if you start looking. Well, not tooting our horn, but you volunteered during the break. You said you'd be surprised how many musicians are aware of your show. But you were saying some positive, some negative. I would actually love to have the musicians on that disagree with me. Um, yeah, that's good. You know, it, it's important to, to have civil conversation. And if someone disagrees with me, I'm not going to get upset and take that as an, as an affront. I think you probably feel the same way. No, no, um, I find it more thought-provoking. It's That's the only way you're going to learn. If you're always preaching to one's own choir, it gets real boring. And I, I've learned a lot from people that I thought I always disagreed with. Um, and uh, I think convictions can sometimes be uh, an excuse for the simple-minded. It, it's The more you learn, sometimes the less you know. You're always my opinions always change with the things that I include in life. Um, touring the world is a great education, and um, I'm not going to stop learning until you know the day I kick it. And I make no apologies for that. Let's take one or two more calls here with the lead singer of Clutch, Neil Fallon. Fire out your main website again. www.prorock.com. That's p r o hyphen r o c k dot com. Can't forget that. We'll link it up at Infowars. Dot com and prisonplanet.com. Oh, and before you leave us, I want to put you on hold. Give us a P.O. box or something. I want to ship you guys all the latest films and books and material, Neil, because we love what you're doing. And maybe sure. some of it will make it in a song someday. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Scott in California. Scott, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, well, I uh, speaking of disagreeing, I mean, I want to disagree with something you said a little bit ago, Alex. Um, you know, you were talking about agreeing with Neil on his outlook. Whereas with your sponsors and your shows, I mean, we've been talking about that this thing that we know as society is, is coming to some type of closure. And to continue to say that we are going to win this thing, yet come on the air with a red alert broadcast at times that you do, freaking people out, selling survival supplies and everything. I mean, you can't have it both ways. Okay, listen, listen, I appreciate your call. And, and that's a, uh, I mean, I could debate that for hours with you. In fact, put him on hold and I'll talk to him when we come back before Bob Chapman comes on. We just got about a minute left here. I'm saying we. Ha I really believe what I'm saying. I mean, I said better buy gold when it was 300. It's a thousand now. I, I mean, yeah, of course we're funding our operation, but I only do what I morally believe. And, and I was talking to Neil during the break. You misunderstood what he said. I mean, Neil, in, in, in closing, you were explaining there's a difference between being concerned and then coming in and acting concerned. I mean, is that the way you said it? Um. I, I understand. I understand Scott's point, and I, I think it's important to differentiate between pointing something out that's scary and then trying to scare people in order to sell something. The, the latter is unacceptable. Um, Absolutely. The only thing we're trying to sell here is freedom, and we need to get scared of the new world order so we get up off our butts and fight it. Neil, let me say bye to you during the break. We'll be right back right. next hour with Bob Chapman. Awesome radio interview. I think what a lot of people do is they look at things two-dimensionally in a very simplistic way. When I learned the federal government was preparing mass graves and for martial law in January, and we interviewed emergency managers from major towns around the country, I said, I don't know if this is going to be a real flu outbreak or a cover for something, but they're deploying NORTHCOM. They're getting ready for this in January. And I was on record, and I am legitimately concerned. 
I have storable food. I have a place to go in the countryside. Uh, I lock my doors at night because I don't want my children to be killed if we ever get burglarized. I put seat belts on my children because I don't want to flip the car if we have a wreck and have them die. And so to sit here and say we don't have a world government forming or eco science written by the White House science czar doesn't say they want to poison the water to sterilize us. Fear-mongering is the government saying Al-Qaeda is going to kill you if you don't give your rights up and let us body scan you. So it is a, you know, the difference is I am true at heart and what we talk about develops and has major gravitas. And I'm here warning the alarm bell. I mean, if I was, you know, ringing a bell as an enemy was coming up to the gates, it wouldn't be fear-mongering. Uh, if somebody breaks in my house and the alarm goes off, and that's happened before, I mean, that, that, that alarm isn't fear-mongering. And you can take or leave what you want from this radio show, uh, but I am proud of what I do. I mean, I've done two hours, actually, I haven't plugged any products, and I should because that's how we fund our operation. I'm proud of what we do. I believe the republic is falling, being conquered by a foreign corporate takeover. And... I've busted my butt making a film and put it out on the Internet for free. I hope people get the DVD to support us. It's in higher quality. Or they get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership. we got five months free right now. That's how I support what we're doing. This is all very expensive. So get the DVDs. Get the material at Infowars.com. I won't allow the PSYOP to work on me that I'm not supposed to fund what we're doing. We're not funded with your tax money or George Soros money. We're funded by people's support. And just like the Founding Fathers were funded by the colonists' support. And so I'll now go to Scott in California. I had to cut him off because it was the end of the hour and our guest had to go. Scott, I think you're simplifying the message. When I come up here a few times a year and say, red alert, uh, you know, I got secret documents from upstate New York, which later came out in mainstream news, that they were saying, get ready for millions dead. And I said, I don't know what's going on with this, but this is a red alert. And then the flu hype did come months later. We were right. I mean, I genuinely am worried about my family. And we need to get people up off their butts to be concerned and to, and, and to be upset. I mean, they're trying to pass government health care this week. They're trying to pass cap and trade. I mean, world government's being announced. What did I fearmonger about? What isn't true? Go ahead, Scott. Thank you. Tell I me. Never... you got one minute. Tell me. Tell okay, me, man. Well, I'm, I'm for real. You don't well, have to discern. Let me tell you. you I, I did not say that you were fear-mongering. I didn't use those words. I think you've been telling the truth, but I think that your message has been changing its shape the more success that you've been gaining. And the more that you say that we can win this thing, we're not going to win this thing until it completely comes down. And so and that's when we start over. Like Mike Rivero says, we need to be thinking about what we're doing beyond this government. And the more it seems like you're trying to, that, that the InfoWars empire rises, it becomes about self-preservation. And now we can win this thing. We're not going to win this thing right now. People, Wait a are minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to hold you over with Bob Chapman. because He's been on hold so we can go over this. My empire it, it isn't rising monetarily. We're where we were two and a half years ago, three years ago. Now, the empire is rising and reaching people, which is actually scary for me. And people have to be told we can win. That's how you win wars, is morale. Look, I only tell what I believe is the truth. Am I perfect? Hell the no. Illusion creates